before you started working with us? So I had been laid off because of the pandemic and I had shifted to doing short-term consulting work while I was looking for a long-term opportunity. And I was finding that I had kind of one foot on the boat, one foot on the dock, that I wasn't fully committed to consulting to do that long-term, but it was keeping me from looking for the next job with a really consistent focused effort. And so I was going through the motions. I was doing a lot of the things that people do you know, checking on LinkedIn, had alerts going, all this stuff. And I was playing the game as you're told to play the game, which is, you know, watch those things, apply online. And what I was finding was I was taking a lot of no's from people that could, couldn't tell me yes. And so I was taking no's from low-level recruiters who were, you know, checking off checklists. Um, a lot of times they would go, oh, God, you, you know, you know more about this than I do. And then I'd never hear from them again. So it was, you know, it was kind of, you know, unless you fit the mold exactly, you didn't get passed through. So I re- just started realizing if you're not getting the results that you want, you've got to change something. Something's got to be done differently. And I had done the things like tweak your resume, do all these things. You can spend a ton of time doing that and a ton of time going through the motions. But if you're not getting results and doing productive activity, you're just doing activity, then you're fooling yourself and you're you're letting probably letting a lot of time pass that it's going to hurt you in the end because this you know if you started an engagement of talking to someone you can really burn up two or three weeks just talking to them you know and and if it's an opportunity that doesn't pan out then you've really lost that time i became aware of the ecu course uh, early in the spring kind of watched it throughout the summer and then i i launched with ecu i think on september 1st so right around uh, labor day At what point during this process, when you were doing what we've all been conditioned to do, you know, apply and talk to people who don't have the authority to to make those decisions, at what point did you say, I just need help, I can't do this anymore? It wasn't any one point, it was kind of a gradual realization that, again, what if you're not getting the results that you want in the things that you're doing, you've got to change and do something differently. And so I had made a lot of small adjustments, like tweaking your resume and, and you know trying different things, but I wasn't finding the jobs that I was interested in, and I wasn't finding the volume of opportunities. So I would find one or two, and then chase them. But then if they don't pan out, then you have to start all over again. Yeah. And what I was looking for was a way to accelerate that, to to find more of these um, proper opportunities that were out there, and do it in a meaningful way so that. I'm not taking no's from people that can't tell me yes. Um, and I love that part. statement. I love yeah. that statement. Well, it's a fundamental of sales, but I had forgotten it. And I was letting a lot of people that couldn't hire me tell me no. And so what I started to do, and, and the ECU course really helped me, was to break that cycle and get into uh, onto the radar screen of, of decision makers and get into meaningful conversations that show your worth, show your your knowledge and expertise and your your ability to do this job in a real more meaningful way than talking to a recruiter to you know just check off some boxes and then hand that to somebody else. So really what ultimately happened was I found an opportunity on LinkedIn that suited my criteria really well. And so I I did apply online, but then I used the, the techniques that I learned at ECU to find a CFO, the CEO, the chief of staff, and reach out to them via uh, email and just say, listen, I've, I've seen this job, um, I've applied, but I wanted to bring this to your attention that I can do this job because of these reasons and kept it short and sweet. And the CFO bit and she handed me over to the uh, chief of staff and, um, and then it was off to the races using the interview techniques that you helped me with and building from one interview to the other to you know, flush out what are their concerns, what are their needs, and be able to address those interview after interview after interview. In rapid succession, I did a series of four of those over the course of about four days. And then within a day or two, the offer came. You know, I know we go through a lot in this course. What did you find most valuable as you were going through this program in working together? What was surprisingly impactful that, that I didn't really expect coming into it was the mindset portion of the of the course because um, this process is really difficult 
mentally because you're dealing with fears that people have of rejection, financial pressure, and pressure, you know, time pressure and financial pressure, because it doesn't matter who you are if you're looking for work. And so over time, those are harder and harder to bear mentally. And it was really helpful to have Christine's portion of the program to help you work through that. Uh, There's some points where I reached a, a real frustration level and it was helpful to be able to have somebody to not only vent to, but be able to give me some feedback that's positive. It's not just me dumping my problems on them. There's actually some solutions that you can work with. You know, what, what advice would you offer someone considering working with us? I would say, don't think of this as, as a cost. Think of this as an investment. So this is an investment in your career. And what would it take to recruit that investment? Probably depending upon your salary, getting a job two weeks earlier, you know, so just getting one pay cycle in advance uh, or faster than you would have on your own efforts, that would pay for the, for the fee. And um, it's one of the most important investments you could make because your career, uh, not only does it, you know, fund your life, but, but it also is a central part of your life. And so um, if that's not working to your satisfaction, you should be willing to invest in that more than any other investment you'd make. And yeah. certainly any other purchase you'd make is it's worth more than a car. It's worth more than a vacation uh, because if you do it correctly, it'll fund all those other things. But, but being happy, being paid properly is fundamentally important. And if you're not where you think you are, you need to make a change. And if you can't do it on your own, you need to get some help. And that's where ECU comes in. Mm-hmm.